building a battle mage from Ulgul, the realm of shadow, coming up next. Hello once again, Warhammer Age of Sigmar players, and welcome back to another Let's Build a Kind of video, where today I'm going to build wizard number three in my set of Colligate Arcane Mystic Battle Wizards. And today we're going to be building one from Ugol, the Realm of Shadow, which has some pretty cool spells in the Malign Sorcery Box, as well as in the War Scroll itself. So if you love these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because every time I make a new video, I want you to see it first. I don't want anyone else to see it first, just you, so pound that notification bell. All right, everybody, without further ado, let's step into the mysterious realm of Ugol and see exactly what the realm is, and then begin our battle mage. So if you want to know what kind of realm Ugol is, it's in our May 2019 White Dwarf magazine, which is sort of an old magazine at this stage since this is 2020. However, if we open it up here, we can see over on page 84, we start to get into the realm of shadow here. And as you can see, there's lots of dark colors, purples, grays, that sort of thing. So Ugol is a place of darkness and mystery where half light and half truths are the best a traveler can wish for. The realm is aptly named for its 13 domains are perpetually swarthed in shadow, cycling not through night and day like the lands of other realms, but rather from umbral gloom to pitch black. It is a place of secrets and lies, of twisted reason and mind-bending illusion, and it rarely conforms to the laws of logic. All right, so that's sort of the warm-up of what this realm's all about. And if we move on here, you can see all the cool type of shadowy colors here. We've got like this kind of blue, shades of black, chasms of mist, the islands of deceit. And then here's one of the residents here. You can see it's a dark elf with like dark purple hair and gray type skin, black boots, that sort of thing. So turning over the page, we do have some neat examples of these different things. Here's one of the Sylvaneth with this bow. It's sort of like a black dark wood. And then here we have an Ugolin Crypt Horror. So these are the Crypt Horrors from, of course, the Crypt Horror Army. You can see again the black dark skin tones. Over here we have the Deadwood, so another Sylvaneth model, using again dark greens, dark shady colors. And then this guy, the Morphane. And then he's, of course, dark purples and whatnot. And then over on here we get those cool uh, Fire Slayers from Oogle. The ones that have the dark shadowy side to them, as well as part of the red fire, which is pretty cool. I started to paint some guys like that, but didn't quite get through them yet. Then here we have some conversions for the realm. So of course here we have a, what is a Weird knob, knob Shaman? Yeah, Weird Knob. Which of course is grey plastic, and then they painted them with sort of this smoky color for his cloaks and whatnot. And then we've got some more people here. This is a Hag Queen by Ben Johnson. This one is by Dan Harden. And of course reading this from across the room. <laughs> and then here's another another take on the Fire Slayers by Stuart Edney. This one of course lots of purple rocks and he wanted to do his uh, Magma Droth as if it was sort of um, albino, you know, because of uh, no light. And then we get these cool spells in here. So endless spells. This of course is the Jaws. Arachnorok's Crushing Jaws by David Harden. You can see this looks like smoke and I like the way he did the teeth on there. This is a, a Celestial Vortex by Matt Hudson. Another cool one using all these purple colors. And then finally they give you an example of the scenery in here. Temples of the Shadow Realm. 
so then it's saying, you know, to use these purple colors and whatnot, and you'll end up with this sort of thing. So very cool detailed articles in that May 2019th White Dwarf to give you some ideas for wizards from the Realm of Shadows. And we do have another reference for Wizard from the Realm of Oogle. This one comes from the 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy Rulebook. But they just call him a Grey Wizard, because that was how it was back then. <laughs> but as you can see, there was a slightly different head on here. It goes in with all the Grey, and a different type of staff with a stone on the end. That sword again. So for my model, I'm going to try to pick something that looks sort of maybe like our Grey Wizard here. Now, for those of you that have been following the series, you know that I've already built two wizards. One, of course, from Shaman, and the other from Gairan. And you can tell that I'm starting to run out of parts on our parts tree to make more wizards. However, what I seem to have here looks kind of like a duplicate. No, maybe not. So, what I have is... It's, uh... Okay. I have body A. I've got two of those. Then I have the hand uh, coming out here, and the one that goes over the crystal ball. I've got one arm raised up, and then the other staff in the opposite hand. I have the wavy dagger, the sword, or both swords, the comet, double-tailed Sigmar comet rod, the burning brazier rod, the uh, bottle with the skull head coming out of it, a couple of the collar neck things, three of them, all three of them, the scythe, the uh, sort of celestial thingy there. <laughs> I've got this face with the long beard and the hood. I've got the Ming the Merciless head, I'll call it. I've got the hand with the skull with the candles. I've got this one with the long Egyptian beard thing. The hourglass guy. The guy with the tall hat with the skull on it. And the burning skull. And basically it's a duplicate on the other parts trees. Oh, no, I still got the book over here on this one. So there's the book. And I think that's about it. I've also got these extra ones there. So, um, except for the body, I still have a lot to choose from. So what would make a good wizard in the realm of shadows? So what I'm thinking is, there is a skull with the candles on it. In that book there they showed cut off the candles and they glued it to the orc shaman, the weird knob shaman. So maybe I'll might try something similar to that. Maybe put them on the base. Sort of as if the candles are around so you can see. Because it is shadowy. The other thing is I could do this little orb so it's sort of like a, like a light bulb, you know? Sort of a, a light source or something. That could be cool. Yeah, there's a few different options here. So what I'll do is I'll cut out the parts and then I'll show you what I've I've uh, picked out. So since this wizard is in the realm of shadow, Oogle, I was thinking that maybe he should have like a companion that could sort of see in the dark sort of thing to help him in his quest around the shadow realms. So here we have a Sylvaneth tree, uh, parts tree, pardon me, a tree, parts tree. These guys are tree people, get it? Anyway, I was looking on this sprue, and I noticed a really cool piece here. This little guy is actually an owl. And it looks like maybe he could perch on something, like on the shoulder of uh, our little wizard here. So I think I might just clip him out and put him on the wizard. Here's the parts that I've picked out. So, of course, we have our circle base, because this is Age of Sigmar. Then I've got the... Uh, the hand that's holding the skulls. Now this is designed for the other type of sleeve that has like just the arm sticking out straight out, not raised. So what I'm going to do is sort of get rid of the hand part in here with my number 16 hobby blade. So that little stem that's sticking out there. And I'm going to take my file and file it a bit flat and then I'm going to mount this to the base down here somewhere at his feet. So it'll be like some candles down there. Then we've got this body. Now this body is actually the, I'll call it the crossover body, because the way the cape is, if you take this arm here, it crosses over in front of them, no matter what arm you use. Like So here's the one with the hand. You see it's crossing over. Whereas the other body, the B body, is more the open body, 
so that it'll be out like this sort of thing, like in my previous two wizards. So anyway, then uh, I've got the arm with the raised bit because these match. There's that little scroll work there that match one another. I've got the owl here that I think will go on his arm without too much hassle. So you'd be like right there kind of thing somehow. And then to make it like that gray wizard, I'm using this head. I might cut that hair off. I found this little hat here that's from an Empire set. But I don't know, it's sort of... Uh, it's like this guy's head. So if you put it there, I don't know how good that would look as a wizard. You know, more because this is sort of a Empire specific specific kind of hat. Pacific. I'm sounding like my kids. Okay, I've got that head with the beard with the hair that's sticking way up. Then I've got this little collar which actually looks sort of like a hood or a hoodie kind of thing when you, uh, whoops, when you put it up like this. So that could work out pretty nicely. And then I've got the skull with the flames because really there's only three options with the raised hand. Skull with the flames the flaming sword or the regular sword and it from the realm of Gur or sorry Ugol the realm of shadows just didn't seem like a sword is the right thing and I've got the um, staff with the comet the Sigmar comet but I'm not really again this kind of realm I don't think it would work right so I might just cut this off here uh, glue this to this so you get the rest of the staff and then cut it off and find something that's more appropriate to what my theory is on the Realm of Shadow instead of this uh, big piece of metal with a flaming comet. I think it's kind of the wrong thing. This is more for like a Azure wizard from the Realm of the Heavens or something as opposed to the Realm of Shadows. So we'll see what I can find. Maybe some kind of something bizarre from Lizard Man staff or something like or Sprue, part tree, something like that. I don't know. We'll see how that one goes along. But uh, that's the parts I've picked. But again, here, if you remember my uh, my look at the um, spells there, the endless spells from Malign Sorcery, here's the Geminids of Ulgish. So that's Hish, I figured this out now, Hish and Ugol. Ulish, Ugol kind of thing. So these are the ones that are like the little yin and yang fireball things. One is blue and one is black and uh, that sort of thing. And then you've got the umbral spell portals. So those are the spell portals that pop up and then you can, if you're standing here, you can put a spell portal there and an opposite one on the other side of the playing field. Put your spell through there, it gets sucked into the portal and blasts out the other portal. That's what's going on in the realm of shadows. So you've got the Geminids and the Spell Portal. So with the parts off of our wizard tree, you know, these types of things, none of that is, is you know, screaming out, Spell Portal, you know, something like that. So I need something that represents that more. Maybe I'll, I had an idea, cut this off here and take one of the candles mounted on. <laughs> that might be all right, but again, I don't know. So. From what I have now, I'll uh, clean up all the parts and then try to glue some of this together and give a coat of black primer. Here we have our wizard from Oogle. And what I did is I actually got a little smart here. I was looking at him and I, I can't really fit that skull with the candles on the base, just with the way this guy is positioned and shaped. But, so what I did is I broke off the twin-tailed comet head on here and I got rid of it. <laughs> and what I did is I took that skull, I cleaned it up a little bit here. As you can see, I got rid of that hand. And I drilled a big hole in it all the way up into here somewhere. And then I was able to put it down on the rod. And I took the little flames on the candle and I bent them so that they're sticking up. Otherwise the flame was sticking straight out and that doesn't look right. And then I glued the little owl onto the shoulder there. Oops. There. There. <laughs> okay. And this time around, usually I don't glue the head in because I want to get all detail underneath. But 
just the way this guy is, I thought I should glue the head in to make sure that the arms fit without that being a problem. And I also put on the high collar. And then I figured, you know, I should glue them onto the base just to get that all correct. Whereas in, you know, the builds, last two builds, I didn't have the guy glued on the base. And then what I did here is, this was simple enough, I just glued that flaming skull on there. But now that I think of it, maybe I should have used the sword again. Anyway, so when we get this together here, the other two components, we do get this sort of arrangement with him with that skull. I might just paint this smoke color like that uh, the gnashing jaws that we saw earlier instead of actual like fire fire coming out. I think that might look okay. It's sort of uh, like it's something toxic he's carrying. And then this is sort of where it's weird with that owl because it's right by his head. So you really can't with that skull there and the owl you just sort of see him peeking out a little bit. I don't know, that might be okay, or it might just look, you know, too cluttered up around where his head is. But as you can see now with the candles, that they're also sort of coming up on that same angle as the flame from the hand. My camera zoomed in all the way. <laughs> okay, hang on. Oh, come on. I can't focus. There we go. So you can sort of see that the candles, the flame of the candles is pointing up like that flame of the skull. So that's sort of how this is going to go. Now what I'll do is take these three components, try to clean off the uh, dust on them, just under the sink with a toothbrush and some soapy water, and then I'll paint the three components in the primer. We could also consider using gray primer here, since he's going to be all gray, pretty much with the skulls and the owl being a little bit different, just so they stand out. And his skin color, I'm going to use like the pallid witch flesh kind of thing and make him look like, uh, you know, uh, hasn't seen the sun in forever, or maybe never. So that's how he'll look. So it should be pretty cool. We have our battle mage in black primer. And now we want to get this cool smoke effect that is uh, done by Dan Harden on these Ravnorak gnashing jaws. So I've set up our paints and all of that, and we've got it ready to begin. So first off, we have our Skaven Blight Dinge, our Dawnstone, Aminostratum Gray, and Praxy White, which is a dry. We're going to use that dry brush technique, so you just get a little bit of paint on the brush, wipe it off onto your palette, and then gently go across on your model and let it all dry brush up. So as you can see that black primer turned out pretty well. Pretty solid. Almost looks reflective there. <laughs> and the way his cloaks you know, on his arms go on should get us pretty close. The only downside is that owl really takes away from his face so I have to do something there about that. Okay I will dry brush this using this principle and we'll take a look at the results. And here we have our battle mage with that smoke effect. I'll show you that a little more in a minute here. Uh, so for that glowing teeth which I'm going to use on the skull in his hand, Dan Harden has Gulliman Blue, Sotek Green, Temple Guard Blue, and then a color called Baharoth Blue, and it's a wash, but I don't have that, so I'm going to try to use this Skink Blue dry brush. I think it should work out okay, because it's in this uh, blue hue that's getting lighter and lighter. So we'll try that on our skull, but in the meantime, here's that, uh, that smoke effect on the wizard. See, it does look kind of cool, doesn't it? dark smoke color almost like a like a uh, drawing a sketch pencil sketch <laughs> so I think it looks pretty cool actually and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep that prax white around so that uh, it, when I glue on his robes together I can just go along the back side of it and make it uh, stand out a little more 
So I'm going to try to apply these colors now onto that skull, and I'll show you the results. Next up, I want to do the wizard's skin color. And I figure that since this is a realm of shadow, he's probably not going to have seen a lot of light. So we're going to make a really light, light skin color here with Raykarth Flesh, Agrath Earthshade, Pallid Witch Flesh, and White Scar. This is the same color sequence I use for candles on my Dwarf Miners. So on his candles here, I'll also apply this. So he'll be basically as pale as these candles. So let's see how that goes together. Oh, but before we do, there's how the uh, blue treatment turned out on that skull. So you can see it is kind of neat, isn't it? Not quite as well defined as those teeth on the Gnashing Jaws spell, but still something very similar in that vein. So now let's put on the skin tones. So here's how our wizard looks after getting his skin tone painted on. It's very light and pale, as you can see. Next up, I want to paint his beard and hair. And I'm going to paint it the same color as I would with stone. So that's Mechanica Standard Grey, Agrath Earthshade, or you could use Nuln Oil. I would if I had any left. <laughs> and then Dawnstone, and then Administratum Grey over the top. And that'll give us a nice beard color. So there is his hair after that stone effect, and it is looking really good. This guy is actually coming along quite cool. I thought it was a little too much on the skin tone or whatever, but the more I look at this, it's more looking like a black and white photograph. So that's a cool effect, actually. Now what I'm thinking of doing is, on the rod and on his iron plates and whatnot that are on his uh, robes and things, I'm going to carry on this grayed out tone by using metal because metal, like steel, is in a gray kind of tone. So here we have Lead Belcher. Instead of Nuln Oil, I'm going to use Gulliman Blue, which should kind of tie it in with the skull. And then we've got Iron Breaker and Rune Fang Steel. So I'll paint those on there and we'll see how he looks. And here we have our Battle Mage after I painted on these silver components. And so there isn't too much left to him. And I've actually glued the one arm on, holding that blue skull. And I noticed <laughs> as I was going around this that I'm starting to rub off some of that gray. So I'm going to go have to go back and touch it up with the gray that I have. I left all the paints out to the side so that I could know what run I had originally. And of course I still have that article. But as you can see, let's see, let's get a little shadow on there. You can see that nice gray paled out look to him. He does really look like a black and white photograph, except for, of course, the green skull on there. But still, very cool stuff. And on this one, I've added in a bit of a blue wash onto that staff. And it is looking pretty much like it should. Maybe give it a little bend over there. Now the only thing left really to paint here is, of course, the flames on the candle, which I'll use some red, yellow, and orange. Actually, red on the bottom, like Mephiston red, Jokero orange, or Fire Dragon blight, and then some yellow, uh, probably Uriel yellow. But the thing that needs to be done is, of course, the owl. And there's many different types of owls, brown ones and all kinds. There's like the Arctic owl. But I was looking at this, and if I put this arm on here, that owl is like right on his face. And of course it's hard to kind of see his face in here with the owl. So I want something that will contrast a little bit here, contrast with it. And I'll tell you, we looked up, I've got books at home here, I don't have the internet at my house. So I've got books and we were looking up owls and all I could find was grey ones. And I couldn't find any pictures of the snowy owl. And then I found this in my kid's room. So I'm going to try to make the owl look like this, even though it is kind of cutesy here. Well, look at what this is called, eh? <laughs> All right. But that's a problem. Sometimes when you need to find reference pictures, you just can't. So, anyway, I'll try to paint that owl much on his shoulder, much like that uh, cutesy owl here. And I'm going to be using some whites and, of course, some more gray. So I'll try to figure out some colors for that. So here I have five paint colors. 
Keep in mind that the owl is already black, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the Skaven Blight Dinge and the Storm Vermin Fur for, like, the top of the head here and the wings along the back. And then the Celestia Grey, Ulithin Grey, and White Scar will end up making this white in here on our little cutie owl. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'll do for the beak and the eyes just yet. But I'll start off with those, and then I'm going to, of course, add little dots onto the back with the white scar. So I will paint that up like that, and I'll show you how it looks. Here's our battle mage from the realm of Oogle, the realm of shadows. After I finish painting him up in the owl and gluing on the arm, doing the touch-ups, and everything else. So for the beak of the owl, I use Zamesty Desert. And on the eyes, I use a Lotharan blue with a couple of dots of Abaddon black. So now you can see, here, let's get a bit of a shadow on here. You can see my battle mage. Again, you can't really see his face, but I do believe the white chest of the owl will bring him up a little bit on the gaming battle table. I had to redo a little bit of the Paraxy white on the back of his robes, but does give him more of that gas kind of smoke cloud look. And in fact, it did actually fix up the spots where the paint rubbed off on my fingers. You can see the spots on the back of the owl here. He's done with my little brush. I did give some yellow candles on there. Well, of course, like fire, whoops, burning candles. Overall, though, I do think he looks quite nice. The yellow candles kind of do look <laughs> a little bit off, considering all the grey tones and everything on there. But still, he needs to see where he's going in the dark. And then, of course, that blue skull with the smoke coming off it. All kinds of coolness. So what I'll do is take some good pictures of him, and then show you what he looks like, and wrap up the video. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that video of building the Battle Mage from Oogle and that you too can have one just as amazing as this guy here. So next week we will be building the fourth wizard in our great set. You don't want to miss that because you are pretty curious as to which realm it's going to be from next week. So in order to see that, don't forget to pound the notification bell on your way out here so that when I upload that video, YouTube will tell you directly to come over and see it. And of course, I want you to be the first one to experience that video. Nobody else, just you, you alone. Then the other people can watch it after, right? So also don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family and say this model kit's not for sale because I'm working on it. But if you would like to see some of the other cool stuff that is for sale, check out our website today, www.monster-hobbies.ca and check out our Warhammer section. There's a lot of cool model kits there, like this Start Collecting uh, Greywater Fastness box, as well as this other box <laughs> right here, which is the Anvil Guard box. And I got more stuff down below. You can't see it. It's all off camera, but you can see it on our website today. So until next time, everybody, happy model building.